Everybody's got a story, and you know what? I enjoy sharing them. Share your story, or someone will write it for you. Arrow.net, A R R O E.net. We are unplugged and totally uncut with Sig Hansen. I'm doing great, thank you. Dude, I, I got to tell you, what you guys are going through this season, th- th- this could not be written. This, this could not have been planned out. I mean, you guys have had to basically restructure everything on the show in order to survive out there. Well, I mean, it's never planned out, number one. And for 18 years, we've been doing this thing. And, and I think that's why people still watch the program is because we don't know from one year to the next what's going to happen, certainly. And uh, that's what I think makes it exciting. Uh, and that's what makes it fun for us as well. You know, And, and that's just part of the life we chose. I, I'll tell you one thing that keeps coming up in conversations as I watch all the episodes of Deadliest Catch. We we don't know what the supply supply chain really is. We don't know where it really starts. Well, it starts with people like yourself. You're out there, and when you're challenged the way that you guys have been challenged, that does affect everybody else. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, like right now we had a closure in our king crab season, so we had to figure out a different way to supplement our incomes. But... Uh, but uh, it's always a challenge, you know, and, and uh, now you're going to see a much greater demand for crab and prices are, uh, I know, are already going through the roof. And so uh, and that's, uh, you know, as long as people enjoy it and, and can afford to buy it, you know, that's the thing. Uh, and there's a market, then uh, it's good. It's good all the way around. And I just love the fact that people see what fishermen do, yep. not just crab fishermen, but all fishermen and what it takes and the risk it takes, and you know, to to get it to market. So, uh, for that reason alone, I mean, the 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 program has just done wonders for all fisheries uh, across the globe. I think. Wouldn't you say that in a really incredible way, you guys are also the Jacques Cousteau's of this generation? Because I mean, to be up in the Bering Sea, my God, the average person doesn't even know what that is until we experience it on de- Deadliest Catch. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of. I mean, I can remember, uh, you know, when when I was first doing this as a kid. Uh, I, I was always thinking, boy, I wish my buddies could see me, you know, uh, I wish I could get this on tape, you know, and then, uh, you know, and then when they, they came around and started filming it, and then you, you got all these comments like, you know, you always told me about the ocean, you always told me about these uh, scary situations, and now they they got to see it, you know, on their television, and then it finally clicked, they understood what yeah. I was talking about, so, so it's, uh, I think a lot of people live vicariously through us as well, and I think it's, it's, it's kind of a it's very flattering, you know, when I think about it that way. Well, one of the things that's I, I love sitting down and getting, getting in group sections with guys or conversations with guys in the way that everybody thinks that they can be on that boat and do what you guys do. Oh, my God. There's there's no way that the average person can do what you do. Well, honestly, I think, uh, look, I've seen the biggest guys fail and I've seen the smallest guys succeed uh, and vice versa. It just I think it just depends on, you know, if you want it bad enough. And, uh, you know, it, it's not for everybody, but uh, if you've got a big enough heart and that's what you want, then uh, then then, yes, the, you can manage. But uh, sometimes, you know, it just it just doesn't work out that way. So how do you deal with all the competition? I mean, I, I come from the world of radio where your competition is the guy that comes on either before you or afterwards. I mean, you're you're face to face with so many rivalries. Right. And that's probably what makes it fun. You know, <laughs> at the end of the day, it's the competition that drives you. Right. And. Let's be honest here. Most of the captains are, are ego driven. Uh, I like to think that I'm humble, but I'll be honest. You know, there's always, there's always that little bit of ego that that you want those bragging rights at the end of the day. And you know, everybody gets a taste of having that one good season behind them where they got those bragging rights. And then that's the thing that drives you. You know, when, especially when you can outsmart the next guy, outfish him. Uh, you know, uh, especially. You know, if you can fib a little bit and, and <laughs> steer them in the wrong direction, it's a competition that way. And, that, and that's what makes it uh, it's, it's fun. It really is when it gets to that point. That, that's what drives a lot of these guys. All right. A real qu- a person question, because one of the things that we don't talk about that much is that how do you get the fuel when you're out there in the water that long? Or are you guys going to start moving towards solar power on those boats? Or is that even possible? Uh, I would imagine it's possible. And, and I imagine someday that's coming. But, uh, you know, fuel... Like, oh, my goodness, like right now we're over five bucks a gallon right. or something. So my boat will burn. If I'm full on, I'm I'm going through about uh, 800 gallons to 1,000 gallons a day. It's a <laughs> lot of fuel. And so uh, I can pack about 60,000 gallons, but typically we'll go out there with, oh, 20, 25,000 gallons. And then, 
and then we'll go through that. And depending on the length of a season or your trip, and then you'll add and add uh, and subtract as you, as you need. So uh, it's an expensive thing. It's a, the overhead is big on those boats, on any fishing boat, uh, any size, and and that's just uh, part of life, you know. So you've uh, that's why you got to get those prices up, and and uh, hopefully it'll uh, it'll be enough to where we can. Uh, be sustainable here. Wow. So when the state of Alaska says that, that you cannot have a red king crab season, I mean, everybody was jumping to black cod or snow crab. How do you reimagine yourself in the way that is this stuff that you guys have already known how to do? Or are you on Google, you know, searching for better ways to fish? No, I mean, you know, these are worst case scenarios. And, and my hat's off to the guys that, you know, like Jake uh, on the saga, he went and did black cod. And, you know, that's an investment in itself and, and trying something new there. And I think Sean, uh, he went Dungeness fishing. And, uh, you know, some of these other guys like uh, Josh and Phil's son, he, they went out and did some uh, uh, golden king crab, uh, you know, when I was in Norway. And, and, you know, I supplemented by going to the old country and, and, and trying it there. So, uh, you know, it, it's not the first time guys have had to do things like that right. and, uh, and make ends meet, so to speak. You know, so it's uh, – but it's the king crab – that has that that luxury price, right? That's the delicacy, and that's where you can make some real big money fast when there's a good quote out there. So, so uh, hopefully there'll be a season next year, and because of the demand, you know, uh, hopefully we'll see more crab and higher prices, mm -hmm. and then uh, the guys that can make it through will will reap those rewards the next go around. That that's the only mentality I was brought up with. You got to cringe when you walk into a grocery store and people are buying that fake crab. I would be looking at them going, do you know what I do for a living? You buy the real stuff. <laughs> no, <it's>, uh, <laughs> you know, honestly, the fake crab is actually made out of, of pollock and, and fish. And believe it or not, that's still supporting the uh, state of Alaska and the fisheries, right? So I'll let you know a little secret. I even, if I make a crab salad, sometimes... I put, you know, the real deal in there because it is expensive. I have to buy it myself. And then I'll put a little bit of the fake stuff in there. Nobody knows. <laughs> you know, I'll I'll cheat a little bit if I have to, depending on how many people are at our, 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 our dinner party or whatever we're doing. And uh, but there's nothing like the real deal. Right? That's right. It's like, <laughs> it, it's not like just like uh, salmon. You know, you can you can get the farm raised and, and it's good. And, and I buy it. But there's nothing like wild caught real salmon. I can taste the difference. I know the difference. And same thing with goals with crab. So it's uh, but I think everybody it, it's hard because it's so expensive and I wish everybody could afford it. And I know that it is a delicacy and, and it's a hard one. But uh, boy, oh, boy, there's nothing like uh, king crab, is there? Oh, you're absolutely right. Sig, you got to come back to the show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. Well, I, I love uh, that you have us here, and, and I'm real proud of the fact that uh, it's been 18 years, and, and I'm flattered that you guys uh, are paying attention and giving us those props. Thank you very much. Well, I've got your book for the 25th anniversary, so I'm looking forward to that, all right? That's the deal. Okay, you be brilliant today, okay, sir? Thank you, sir. Appreciate it.